Warren Gurel, a 1979 graduate of the law school, is a perfect example. He is the CEO emeritus of Hogan Lovells, one of the nation's premier law firms. As the chairman of Washington-based Hogan and Hartson, he negotiated and oversaw the merger of that firm with the London-based firm Lovells, creating and then leading a genuinely global law firm with more than 40 offices around the world. He was one of the few managing partners of a major law firm who maintained a substantial practice of his own, specializing in mergers and acquisitions, financing, and governance of public companies, particularly in the commercial real estate sector. In 1999, shortly before he became the chairman of his firm, he was named Deal Maker of the Year by the American lawyer. Warren came to UVA after receiving his undergraduate degree from Princeton and went to Hogan and Hartson right out of law school. He has been a tremendously loyal alumnus and currently serves on the board of trustees of the law school foundation, which raises and manages the law school's private support. He is as active outside the office as inside it and is an active hiker, skier, uh, golfer, and uh, as I learned today, driver. Uh, his, his success, but more importantly, his integrity, good humor, and deep concern for every organization with which he is associated are what we wish for all of our graduates. Please join me in welcoming Warren Gorell. Thank you, Paul. I admit it's a little hard to hear yourself uh, introduced like that every once in a while when you know you're just a regular guy and have been uh, lucky uh, all along, but uh, thank you for those remarks. Uh, like uh, Cordell, I would say I'm uh, very humbled uh, to be asked to speak with you uh, today. Um, I'm highly confident, uh, like Cordell, I would not have uh, qualified to be admitted uh, to this class, uh, probably not even to uh, Cordell and Jason's class, so it's, this is one of the few times I feel good about uh, being out 35 years. <laughs> so first I would just say good morning. Wait, this is... Come on, this is your chance to do well in class participation. Get off to a good start. <laughs> Thanks for having me uh, here today and uh, congratulations to each of you uh, for being here. I have to say I do remember uh, what it was like 35 years ago uh, being a first year uh, law student. I, re I remember the, the day, the fateful day when I was uh, sitting in criminal law and John Jeffries uttered those words well, how about it, Mr. Gorell? Can you help us today? <laughs> and after I caught my breath, uh, actually, I, I muddled through and uh, did okay, and uh, you'll be able to do the same. So in thinking about what I would speak to you about today and knowing all of the fantastic uh, professors that are here at the University of Virginia Law School, I decided I wouldn't really speak to you about some intellectual subject, but would actually try to do something uh, that we all should do, and that is talk about a few things that I actually know something about, and that is uh, be practical. So there are three things that I would like to speak with you about today, and actually they cover some of the themes that you already heard about from Paul and, and Cordell. The first is, what are a few of the things that you need to do to succeed in law school? The second is, what do you need to do to be a successful lawyer? And third, uh, what's going on in the legal market today? And will you be able to get a job when you graduate? <laughs> so first, uh, success in law school. As Paul said, uh, really the first year is all about learning to think like a lawyer. You acquire some substantive knowledge and a few fundamental disciplines of the law and you learn how to analyze uh, and solve problems. Uh, I would just say, don't be intimidated by your classmates or your professors. They're, it's absolutely clear, there are a lot of smart people around, around here. Many of them will be smarter than each of you. Some of you may not have been in the categories of people that Cordell mentioned as he went through. I have experience with that. I wasn't any of those things either. But the truth is, you're really qualified. You can do this, and there are an incredible number of resources available here to help you along the way. So you need to get started in your first year by taking advantage of those, and I'll come back to some of that. In the second and third years, as Paul alluded to, you're actually gonna learn how to do. 
That is how to solve, how to counsel, how to advocate, how to persuade, and most importantly, uh, how to lead. Uh, I would just advise you to take courses with a view to balancing the things that really interest you and the things you should really know something about. Uh, and those are sometimes mutually exclusive. So and what I mean by that is take the things that you really need to know to be a good lawyer, but also do some things that you really ought to know something about to be a good citizen. So clearly, topics like constitutional law and criminal law, those are topics that, you know, as a lawyer, it's good to, to know about even if you're not going to practice in those areas. But also, take courses like corporate law, even federal income tax. I know people are already nervous about federal income tax. Actually, you need to know something about that, and those are, it's really good to take those kinds of courses. The second thing is, and this is where Virginia offers fantastic opportunities, take courses that involve the practical aspects of practicing law and anything that involves teamwork. Uh, there are courses in the law and business, there are litigation uh, workshops, there are many things around here that give practical experience uh, in order to, to get, get some actual uh, capability. But also, anything that involves teamwork is going to help you uh, in the long run because those are things that where you have to come up with a group solution, you not only learn how to to give and take with other people, but you always, you also always often come up with the absolute best answer, much more than you could on your own. And that's why today, at the highest levels of practice of law in this country, collaboration is critical in getting uh, the best results for our clients. So every year for the last uh, 14 years, I've given some practical tips to the new associates who join uh, Hogan Lovells. And, uh, you know, I just uh, stepped down, as, as Paul is alluding to, in the month of July, I made way for my, my successor uh, and basically drove back and forth across, the Amer across America, 10,214 miles. It was something I'd always wanted to do and never been able to do, and this was the chance to do it. Uh, my wife drove eight miles. <laughs> But it was actually part of what I'm, these principles I'm talking to you about, a give and take. It wasn't that I wouldn't let her drive and I had to be in control, although getting at least one way coast to coast on my own was a bit of an objective. But it was more, she knows every day, if you ask me what I'd like to do, and it would be get up and drive, and so she said fine, and she navigated, made sure we got to the best uh, places that are actually in uh, man versus food, and drive-ins, <laughs> and diners, and all of this. Uh, and so uh, I did one night uh, drink more than two glasses of wine. That's um, a rule in our family since she doesn't drink and I enjoy wine that she got to drive home. So that was the eight miles. So what are the practical tips uh, uh, I give? Um, and this was brought home when I was asked to, to uh, interview and in what you read about in the, uh, the, the, the um, that little interview that I gave. That is, what is the one thing that you wish you had known before going to law school? Well, I think like a lawyer, so I said, well, where's the trick in that question? And the first thing I thought of, well, does that mean, what did I want to know that would have prevented me from being a lawyer so I wouldn't have gone down this road? And I talked to my wife, I actually talked to my kids. I said, you know, that can't be what they're after here, you know, and asking me this question. Uh, because the truth of the matter is, there's really nothing I know today uh, that had I known before I went to law school would have caused me to do something different. I really love what I do, and I get a lot of satisfaction out of it. So then I decided, well, it must mean what did I, what should I have known before actually going to law school that would help me in law school? And so I would have to say the one thing that I, I learned is that uh, if I had known from the outset that it wasn't necessary or even actually helpful to be consumed by studying all the time in order to do well in law school, that would have been a good thing to know. Now, I actually did learn that lesson pretty quickly, uh, but it would have been nice to know on day, day one. So for me, the recipe would be, one, do the reading, go to class. Um, it's actually, and actually engage in class. Um, I would say this, and, and take good notes. Now these are very simple things to do, but not everyone does it. 
Uh, and you don't want to overdo it. So participating in class, you don't want to try to hog the show. You don't want to be on everyone's turkey bingo card. <laughs> but but you, you can actually engage and you'll get a lot more, more out of it. Another thing is to get involved in activities. There are a huge number of activities, many more than when I was here, and all of them help in doing things that are going to enable you to become a good lawyer. Develop enduring relationships. Uh, as, as both Cordell and Paul uh, said, uh, you you, you're sitting here with people who are gonna be your clients. You're, you're not really competing with each other. The goal here is for everyone to support each other and get through this together and to do well together. And you just never know who it's gonna be who can actually be the person who helps you. So I think back, there was a guy in my class, he wasn't actually one of my closest friends, but I was always nice to him. He went to Yale, I went to Princeton, I didn't really have a lot of use for him. But, <laughs> But what happened? About five years ago, he called me up. We see each other at reunions, and he said, hey, I, I've got a problem uh, with my, for my company that I'd like to, uh, your, your help in and your firm's help. And lo and behold, we, were, we got the business, and they've paid us several millions of dollars over the last five years, and all I had to do is, like, be nice to the guy. <laughs> So, like I said, some of this is not that hard. <laughs> I've already mentioned taking advantage of the support the law school has to offer you. That includes things like career placement. One of Hogan Lovell's former associates, a graduate of the law school, Joby Ryan, actually works here. I know from having worked with Joby at the firm, he's a fantastic guy. The resources there are incredibly important. And also, it's not just about what you do in the law school, but I would say outside of, of your classes, you need to be active and get a lot of exercise. I uh, probably uh, was in the best shape of my life when I was in, in law school. Uh, you can go to class, do the reading, take notes, study, and still have time to do other things, and it's gonna help you. It's, not gonna, it's gonna help you both in law school, and it'll help you down the road. And then last, uh, not least, have a sense of humor and don't take yourself too seriously. Um, it's, really, uh, it's, it's really important to try to do that. So those are the kinds of tips I would say of how to uh, succeed in law school. Uh, let me talk just a few minutes about what do you need to do to be successful as a lawyer. First, do something that you're passionate about. Uh, there are many different types of jobs that are available uh, to graduates of University of Virginia Law School today. You can go to big, big law firms like the one I'm a part of. You can go to smaller law firms. You can go to companies. You can go to government. You can work for public service organizations. I mean, there are just a huge number of things that you uh, can do. And the, you will, the key is to do something that you're passionate about. Don't just go do something because everyone else is doing it. True, it may be the case that in your second year when you have the opportunity to go to a big law firm that uh, that's actually something you want to do so you can see what it's like. But it's not going to be for everyone, uh, even though it's worked out uh, pretty well for me. And so, so um, I would just say be passionate about what you do. In trying to be a little more practical, I would offer a few suggestions for their route to go. Six of them, I think, are sort of general principles, and three I would put into sort of overarching guidelines. So the six general principles, which don't really uh, require a lot of elaboration, are first and foremost, uh, always have the highest integrity and ethics. As lawyers, that's what we're responsible for. As people, that's what we need to do. It's uncompromising. Don't ever find yourself in a position for a client, yourself, your firm, whatever, where you're challenged ethically and you don't do the right thing. I promise you, it may be hard, but no, you can't go back. Once you cross the line, there's no going back. And so please uh, always remember, it may be hard at the time, but it'll be, be good in the end to have the highest integrity and ethics. The second is really to engage, to be all in, to work hard, um, and to find work that you find that's meaningful. Um, I read uh, on, my, on my trip the book about Malcolm Glaswell, the, the Outliers, and it's true, people like Bill Gates or Joe Flom, you know, there were special circumstances that came about to allow those guys to be outliers. But one thing that everyone has in common, and actually 
It's something that we all can do, and that is to find work that's meaningful and to work hard at it. And that's something that um, all of us need to do. The third is don't leave your common sense at the door. There's room for a lot of common sense in the law. And that's something that you don't always see, and if you bring your common sense, you'll have an advantage over a lot of people. Fourth, be a problem solver, not just a problem identifier. Clients don't pay a lot for people to identify the problems. What they do is they pay you to solve the problems. And in the course of doing these things, learn to be a great decision maker and to have sound judgment in the toughest situations. So be a leader. Put yourself in the, in the tough situations. Ask to be in those situations. And, and a place where your colleagues, your clients will look to you to help um, fashion uh, the, the solution out of a very challenging situation. And then six, as I said before, be a team player and a supporter of your colleagues. So what are the three overarching guidelines that I uh, would encourage you uh, to, to keep bear in mind? The first, and this is not going to be natural for a lot of us as lawyers, but be bold. Take risks by not being afraid to do something that hasn't been done before. And that's something that's very uh, important. And of course, we are lawyers. We're some, probably more risk averse than the, uh, the average uh, person in, in our communities. But we're all facing change. And there are going to be things that haven't been done before. And if you're not bold, if you're not, a, not uh, sort of embracing uh, change and trying to do things that haven't been done, uh, you won't get nearly as far. One of the highest compliments I think was ever paid to me by one of my partners, and this was you know, way before the Hogan and Hartson Lovells merger, it's like 15 years ago, he said, you know, one of the good things about Gorel is he's not afraid to do something that nobody's done before. At first, I wasn't really sure about that being a great compliment. I learned over time uh, that it was. And so when, we, when it came about to put together two 1,200 lawyer law firms, um, you know, at a time following the start of the financial crisis, it wasn't obvious that you should actually lead your firm into a merger. In fact, when I first became the chairman of Hogan and Hartson in 2001, one of the things I promised the partners was that we had a great culture. It's all about collaboration and people. I said, the one thing you can trust me on is I will never lead you into a transformational merger. <laughs> well, you know, you have to adapt. The world changed in ways we could have never foreseen, and that was clearly the right way to go because the world is increasingly global. Big multinational businesses want to use fewer law firms, and I saw that if we could have really high-end capabilities around the globe, not just outposts, we would have a huge advantage. And so far, uh, so good. Uh, the second thing is always bring your A-game to every project, every case, every situation because you literally never know, you can never predict which opportunity will change your life. Now that may sound trite, but it's absolutely true. You don't know if it's a small matter, a big matter, or whatever, but if you bring your best, bring your A game to every project, you'll ensure that you're putting yourself in the best position to find that opportunity that will change your life. And I say that with some experience because I can literally say that I can trace virtually all of my practice, except for the business from my Yaley classmate, uh, back to one transaction I worked on in 1986. Think about that. And that's, you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars of business over the years, and it came from one project that I worked on in 1986 that was a cutting edge project that ended up putting me in a position and my team in a position to where we got started getting asked by people who hadn't worked with us before to help them. And we just kept going and going and going. And today, you can literally uh, go back to then, and that's it. So that would be uh, the second piece of advice. And the third, and I think this is something that probably comes naturally to all of you, or you wouldn't have gotten past uh, Cordell, and that is give back. Uh, be involved in pro bono work and find other ways in the community for you to help those who are less fortunate uh, than you are. 
As lawyers, I think we have a special responsibility uh, to do that because of the way the laws impact every person's life. No matter where they are in the economic strata, no matter where they are uh, from a sociological standpoint, you have the ability to make sure people have access to justice, you have the ability to actually make things uh, change. So much has actually been made of the fact that I was uh, continuing to practice while I was the CEO. But actually one of the things that I'm proudest of is having continued to be involved in pro bono activities over all those years. It's given me a huge amount of satisfaction to be able to help other people. And also, frankly, it helps uh, when you're encouraging everyone else to do pro bono, no matter how busy you are, if I'm doing it, it sort of makes it harder for everybody else uh, uh, not to do it. And I can just tell you, it's not, about, uh, it's not about the money, it's not about the prestige, it's about the feeling that you get from helping other people and really seeing that you're making a difference in, in their lives. And so, as a leader, and that's one of the things you, we've said you need to be focused on, you have to be a role model, you have to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And so all of us uh, need to be mindful, no matter what we do, that we are looking for ways to give back and help uh, other people. Um, a, um, and so last, let me just uh, say a couple of words about what's happening in the legal market and uh, will you be able to get a job when you graduate? And related to that is the issue of, is big law dead? Um, well, yes, I'm happy to comfort you that you all will be able to get jobs and they'll be meaningful jobs uh, when you graduate. Virginia has uh, one of the best track records in doing this across that whole spectrum of opportunities I described earlier. That's something that you'll, you'll be able to do. Uh, you just need to be passionate about it and take advantage of the resources that are here. For those of you who do decide uh, that a large firm is the route that you'd like to pursue, I can definitely tell you that big law is not dead and it's not going to die. Uh, <laughs> It's true uh, that the market is incredibly competitive, uh, more so than any time in the past. That is absolutely the case. It means that big law firms are not hiring as many uh, law students as, and young lawyers as we used to, but we're still hiring a lot. And the good thing is we all recognize the importance of doing that, and we know from our businesses that the model uh, is based on that and needs to continue to be be based on, on that. And so in you, when you look at the types of matters that we handle, it typically are big matters. They require huge resources. They may require global resources. If you, when you have something that's bet the ranch, you need, need a team of people to do that. The data, uh, despite what you'll, you may read from some other uh, people who have perhaps sometimes their own interest uh, in mind, uh, the data is, shows that the growth has been good. It's, uh, the, clearly, uh, there was an issue for everyone uh, in the country, including uh, law firms following the, the start of the uh, financial crisis, but the law firm, big law firms are, are continuing to do well in the last couple of years and year to date, things are continuing uh, to progress in that way. And third, I think it goes back to this pro bono idea, those law firms, our law firms actually uh, make huge contributions uh, to society. It's not about uh, making the money. So I think of th some of the things that Hogan Lovells has been involved in. We're involved in desegregation as, of several school systems across the country. We help clean up the, the air pollution in the Grand Canyon. These are things that only a real lo really large law firm with great resources and great lawyers uh, would have been able to do. So I'm not saying that uh, it's actually right for, for everyone, and actually I'm not even saying that's as, as good as it was in 2070, but it's 2007. <laughs> I really am forward looking. Um, but it's definitely there and an opportunity for all of you. So for me, the bottom line is that each of us really just needs to try to find a way to make a difference, whatever that might be. And I would just close by encouraging you, even challenging you, to take advantage of everything there is to, to get over the next three years here at this great law school and prepare yourself to go out there and to make a difference. That's what Virginia really is all about. Thank you. <laughs>